So why does the Catholic Church say that Joseph and Mary never engaged in sexual union? The Bible itself says that Jesus had brothers and sisters. I'm Dr. Christopher West, the Theology of the Body guy. Let's take a deeper look. We're coming to the final question in our series, looking at questions from my book, The Good News About Sex and Marriage. I hope you've enjoyed these series of videos. If you're jumping in now to this video for the first time and haven't seen the others, be sure to check them out. Of course, I'm going to continue with all kinds of forthcoming videos on this channel. This is just the close of a certain chapter of what we're doing on this channel. If you want to follow along, we are on page 193. If you don't have a copy of this book and you'd like your own, check out the link below. All right, so why does the church say Joseph and Mary never engaged in sexual union? The Bible says he had brothers and sisters. While Scripture speaks of Jesus' brothers and sisters in various passages, brothers and sisters for the Jewish people often referred not only to people who shared the same parents, but to other close relatives. Here I quote from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The Church has always understood these passages, not as referring to other children of the Virgin Mary. In fact, James and Joseph Brothers of Jesus are the sons of another Mary, a disciple of Christ whom St. Matthew significantly calls the other Mary. These brothers and sisters mentioned in the gospel of Jesus, they are close relations of Jesus according to an Old Testament expression. So it raises the question of who has the authority to tell us what the Bible means, right? If God did not establish an authority on earth to tell us what the Bible actually means and doesn't mean, then all we have is your view versus my view and 30,000 different denominations fighting it out. The Catholic Church, we believe as Catholics, has been given the authority from Jesus himself to authentically interpret for us what the scripture means. And so we can faithfully trust Mary didn't have any other children. But this still doesn't answer the question, why does the church teach that Joseph and Mary didn't have sexual relations? Let's press in here. Many tend to think of the church's teaching on Mary's perpetual virginity as proof of the church's negativity towards sex. Some very confused Christians may give that impression, but nothing could be further from the truth, my brothers and sisters. As the French philosopher Catholic man Fabrice Hadjaj rightly insists, and here I quote him, Mary's virginity is not a rejection of sexuality as is frequently thought. But on the contrary, Mary's virginity is the most perfect fulfillment of human sexuality imaginable. What? How so? Bear with me here. Fabrice Hadjaj goes on to say, Mary is not asexual. She is a woman made of blood and bone. She lived her femininity to the full. And this does not necessitate sexual relations. Sexuality, Hadjaj continues, is above all a call to open to transcendence. It is, sexuality is, which is especially important here, it is a fertile opening to transcendence. Sexuality in God's plan enters into a drama, and this drama is connected with being fruitful in the Holy Spirit. In Mary, this opening is radical. She reveals... Mary reveals that the essence of sexuality is not a passing physical pleasure, but the essence of sexuality is a call to be open to God himself. woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Mary reveals the ultimate purpose and meaning of sexuality by opening her womanhood her sexuality, her femaleness, her very womb, her very ova, to the power, the life-giving power of God himself. 
Remember, she says to the angel, how am I going to conceive? I do not know man. That biblical word know is very important. It goes back to Genesis. Adam knew his wife Eve, right? The angel could well have said to Mary, quoting from the prophet Hosea, you will know the Lord. This is eternal life, Jesus says. To know God, that's the same biblical word as Adam knew his wife. This knowledge, sexual knowledge, Adam knew his wife Eve and they conceived. That's just a little, little, little glimmer of the knowledge for which we are destined in eternity when we will know God and we will be betrothed to God forever. Mary's virginity is the pledge of her bridal self, her bridal gift to God himself. And in this way, Mary's virginal sexuality reveals the ultimate purpose of sexuality, which is not human union, but union with the divine. This is our faith. Hence, Hajjaj concludes that in the case of Mary, we are dealing with the revelation of the very essence of sexuality. That's the end of his quote. And then I go on to say this. This is what Joseph and Mary's celibate marriage is all about. It is the full revelation of the very essence of sexuality understood as a call to union with the divine. Mary, having virginally conceived God's Son, was given the unique privilege of already living while on earth the consummation of the marriage of eternity, the marriage of heaven. Now, think about it here. The Bible begins with the marriage of man and woman. It ends with the marriage of Christ and the church, the ultimate marriage. Mary is already living that ultimate marriage while on earth. For her to have had sexual relations with Joseph would have been a step backwards. Instead of stepping backwards with Joseph to the earthly foreshadowing of the ultimate reality of union with God, instead, Mary reaches her hand back to Joseph and says, Joseph, come with me, buddy, to the eternal fulfillment of the union of man and woman. We get to live it now. Come with me into the nuptials of the infinite, the eternal, the knowledge of God. This, then, makes the celibate marriage of Joseph and Mary, which we can recognize is a paradox, right? Celibate marriage, virgin mother, uh, God-man. These are all paradoxes. We have to hold them together in a certain tension. And if we can hold it together, that tension explodes with fertility. Indeed, God gave Joseph and Mary an exceptional calling. He gave them the calling to live the marital vocation and the celibate vocation at the same time. Now, remember from other videos, I hope you've seen them. If not, check out the library. Check out the one where I talk about the meaning of celibacy. Here's a, here's a review. The Bible begins with the marriage of man and woman. It ends with the marriage of Christ and the church, right? Celibacy is a choice for this bookend of the Bible. Earthly marriage is a choice to live out the vocation of marriage as God created it to be in the beginning. Joseph and Mary have the unique calling of living the earthly marriage and the heavenly marriage at the same time. In other words, they're living both callings, both realities. We could put it this way. Their celibate marriage is the marriage of earthly marriage and heavenly marriage. In other words, their celibate marriage is the marriage of heaven and earth. And what was the fruit of their marriage of heaven and earth? The marriage of heaven and earth in the Word made flesh. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, is the marriage in His very person of God and humanity. Divine nature, human nature come together, wed in the person of Jesus Christ. And so St. Augustine says that the marriage of heaven and earth is consummated in the bridal chamber 
of Mary's womb. My brothers and sisters, can you see, are you beginning to see the celibate marriage of Joseph and Mary is not a negation of sexuality. It is the ultimate sublimation of sexuality, the ultimate making sublime, lifting up into the heavenly realm. This is what our faith proclaims. This is who we really are. We, our bodies, we as men and women, our bodies are designed by God to reveal this glorious divine vision, theology of the body. Let us ask Joseph and Mary to pray for us that we would come to understand how their celibate marriage reveals the ultimate truth of our own humanity, of our own destiny, that we too are destined to participate in this fruitful union of eternity. Lord, open our eyes. If this is all true, no wonder there's an enemy attacking the meaning of our bodies, the meaning of our sexuality. He's trying to blind us to who we really are. Lord, open our eyes. I invite you, my brothers and sisters, continue this journey with me. Dive deeper and deeper into what this theology of the body has to offer us. Check out the other videos on this channel. Check out the link to the exclusive formation we provide our patron community. And check out the link to the online and in-person courses I offer through the Theology of the Body Institute. Until our next time together in the next video, may our eyes really and truly be opened. Open our eyes, Lord, to the glory revealed in the celibate marriage of Joseph and Mary, the marriage of heaven and earth.